Okay, today is a new lesson on my friend Jesus. And I had the children to make something this morning. Let's see what it is. Everybody hold it up where they can see it. What is it? It's a picture of us. No, yeah. It's a picture of a, it's it's a, a cake. cake. No, it isn't a cake. What is it? It's a picture of a, of a door. It's a picture of a, of a door. No. What is it? It's what a door it? hanger. We have a new it's member a of our class this morning. His name is Joey. So, Joey, will you tell us what is it? It's a door. It's a door hanger. And, and what is it for? You're supposed to put it on your um, doorknob. That doorknob and what? When you see it, what are you going to? What's going to remind you to do? To pray every night. Yes. Let's read. Read, Gloria. Read what it says. As I go to bed each night, I will pray to God. Pray to your Father, Matthew, Matthew six, six. Okay. As, as I go to bed each night, I will pray to God. Well, let's let's look at them. Y'all hold them up there and see if they're. Did they look pretty? Yes, they did a good job. Didn't they? Pretty. Look at this one. This one, Bill made it look like exactly like himself. <laughs> All that's missing is two hundred and, and Joey's is for Christmas, isn't it? Yours, yeah. yours is red and green for yeah. Christmas. What, and Loria, she loves those two colors. And Nehemiah, look at his boy. He he colored it good. His his little boy matches everything else. That's neat. And then mommy, she did a good job too. So if y'all take them home, hang them on your door, and when you see your door hanger, what are you going to remember to do? Pray every night. Yes, you're going to remember to pray. Because my friend Jesus teaches me to always pray. We're going to, we're going to learn about that today. Okay? Here's a picture of my friend Jesus, what people thought Jesus looked like. And what is he doing? Praying. Yeah. Praying. What is he doing? He's praying. Who is he praying to? To God, yes, Nehemiah. Is that what you're going to say? Praying to God? Who is God to, to Jesus? His, his Father. Yes, it's His Father, isn't He? Okay, Mommy, what you want to say? Um, Jesus prays every night. Oh, yes. Did you know Jesus is always praying now? The Bible says, don't tear your paper now. Put it under your seat so y'all don't tear it up. Gloria's already starting to try to tear hers up. Don't pair it up. Okay, because you want it for your doorknob, right? Okay, Jesus, the Son of God, He was praying to His Father. And who was His Father? God. God was His Father, wasn't He? He was praying to His Father, and He prayed, who said every night? God. Did you say that, Nehemiah, that He prays every night? Jesus... Yeah. Who was it, Amani? Amani said she pray, he prays every night. Guess what he's doing right now? Jesus is praying right now. The Bible says he's sitting at the right hand of the Father, making intercession for us. That means he's praying or talking. Because really praying is just talking. He's talking to God about yes. you and me, all of us. Okay? So Jesus taught his disciples to pray. He taught his disciples to pray. Now, every one of you in here knows how he taught his disciples to pray. Yes, I'm going to start with Amani. How did he ta teach his disciples to pray, Amani? I know, but w what prayer did he pray when he told them to taught them to pray? Oh, oh. what pray? Oh, don't don't give her a hint. Let's just hint. see if she can do it. Remember, he was talking to his father. Put your dress down. He was talking to our father. What? What was he? What was he saying? What was the prayer he told us to pray? He told us to pray every night. And what did he say? He said yes. <laughs> All right. Now we're gonna ask Nehemiah. What did Jesus? How did Jesus teach his disciples to pray? Um. Oh. No, he taught him to pray a prayer. What prayer was it? What prayer was it? You know it. You know it. Amani, you know it. What's the prayer he was teaching, teaching him to pray? He said, what? What did he say? We said every day you come to school. 
What, Nehemiah? Our Father. Yes! Which what? Our Father. Yes, you got it. You knew it too, didn't you, Imani? It's all about you the journey. It. It's all about and, the journey. And did you, know, did you know, Joey? This is the prayer that Jesus taught his disciples to pray. He said, when you pray. This manner, therefore, pray. Yes, pray like this. Pray after this manner. What did he say? Let's all pray it together. Can you pray it? Look. That's from an other Here we go. Now you know it, Joey. Okay, let's all pray it right now. Ready? Our Father, which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done in earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. And forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. You knew it, didn't you? This was the way the Lord taught his disciples to pray. They asked him, teach us to pray. And he taught them that prayer. What, money? Money. Yes, yeah, but come right back. Next time, try to go before. I'm not doing bathroom breaks. Next time, try to come go before. Okay, we're going to talk about this prayer for a few minutes. Okay, first of all, Jesus said, he didn't say, y'all pray my, my Father, did he? He said, pray our Father. What does that make you know, Bill? We're not joking in this class. Yes, you would say because God is all of our fathers because He created us. Yes, He is. He created us. And Jesus, when He came, He made a way for us to be in the family of God. He made a way for us to be belong to God. We may have chosen otherwise. We may have chosen to belong only to ourselves or to the devil. Some mm -hmm. people choose to belong to the devil. Some people choose only to belong to themselves. But Jesus wanted us always to pray, Our Father. Because He wanted us to belong to Him. Amen. Belong to God. Just like He belonged to God. He was, was Jesus, did He belong to God? How was He related to God? Because, because that's His Father. Yes, He was God's Son, wasn't He? Jesus was God's Son. So He said, for all of us to pray, our Father. He was saying, my Father is going to be your Father. My Father is going to be your Father. My God's going to be your God. That's exactly what He said when He rose from the dead. He said, now, my Father is your Father. My God is your God. Because He died on the cross. Gloria, what did He do to help us to come back into being a child of God? What did Jesus do on the cross? He died on the cross. He shed His blood, right? So His blood could wash us all clean from sins. And so we could be one of God's children just like He is. Right? Nehemiah? I know why He did it. Why? Jesus died on the cross for our sins. He did. Mm. Because our sins keep us out of heaven, right? And keep us out of being fellows, having a fellowship with God. Keep us from having from being close to God like Jesus was to God. So when you allow the blood of Christ to wash you clean from all your sins, then you can be close to God like Jesus is. He's always been close to God. Go ahead. He created all the stuff and all of us. Okay. Our Father which art in heaven. Do you see? I had a comma right there and I marked it out. Because when I looked in the Bible, it didn't have a comma. Our Father which art in heaven. Let's say that. Our, Our Father, Father which art in heaven. heaven. Hallowed be thy name. Just that part. Joey, why did it say which art in heaven? Do you have a father here on the earth? Don't you? His name is David, right? You have a father here on earth. He's your dad or your father. So when we say our Father which art in heaven, we're trying to say it's a different Father than mine here on earth, right? So everybody say it 
I always say it with a comma there, but I'm going to quit saying it with a comma. I'm going to say it just the way it is. Ready? Our Father which art in heaven. Got it? Hallowed be thy name. Now, Bill's going to tell us. No, I guess I better ask Laurie Webster first. Mm. Laurie Webster, what does this word mean? Hallowed. Say hallowed. <laughs> hallowed. Some people think it means, it says hallowed. Hallowed would be nothing in it. <laughs> right. Empty nothing in it. Empty is your name. Right. No, it's not hallowed. Its name's not hallowed. It's hallowed. What does hallowed? Are you going to try to answer it? What does it mean then? Yeah, I'll let you get a chance first. Hallowed. Say how and be You are so right. It's not the definition of it, but you are right when you say, Hallowed be thy name, it's because you love him. Do you think so, Joey? When you say, Hallowed be thy name, it's because you love him. What about you, Bill? You think that's right? It does have something with being hollow because it's holy. That's just what I say, really. Um, Gordon was going to tell us the definition of Halloween. Okay, so you know how people call it Halloween, right? Uh -huh. And so it's all Hallow's Eve, yeah. basically. Uh -huh. And so... What is, so what does Hallow mean? What does Hallow's, Hallowed mean? Blessed, basically. <laughs> That's what we feel during Halloween. Blessed? Yeah. I feel blessed, blessed or blessed? Halloween. No, it doesn't really. Okay, Monty, what does it mean? It means blessings we pray and we pray for someone that's really sick. Okay, wait a minute. I'm going to let Brother Jose tell us what the word hallowed means. <laughs> uh oh, dear God. Okay. It means in the lights. <laughs> okay, well, hallowed. Hallowed. Hallowed, it means, well, I'm not going to give you a definition. But. Just tell me one word that. Well, holy, holy, yes. holy is your name. Holy, what in the world does the word holy mean, Bill? It isn't in the world, is it? When I said what in the world, there's not much in the world that's holy. What is holy? A church. Well, in the Bible in the Revelation, a church. Said, holy, the Bible is holy, holy. Holy, holy. God's word is holy. God is holy. God is holy. Full. What does holy mean, Joey? Holy. Perfect. Perfect pure, is right. Pure, full when you're made pure, whole, when you're made whole, pure, you're full made of glory. Yeah. What? That's it. <laughs> it's, it's, yeah, Amani, please stop that. It's, it's annoying when, and it's distracting. It's like, it's and show him that we care and all of that is because he is holy. Mm -hmm. And this is holy between us. Right. When you start praying, it's holy between you and him. You're holy. But what is holy, Joey? But Bill was saying some definitions. Say some more, Bill. You said perfect. Perfect, pure, pure full of glory. Full of glory. Wow. Clean, completely clean, undefiled. That's the word I was Undefiled meaning it's nothing. Nothing has has made it less than than it's completely what it ought to be. Holy. When we say hallowed be thy name, we're saying your name is 
completely pure and perfect and wonderful and clean and holy. Just filled. Your whole, your whole, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. His kingdom is going to come, and we're asking him to let it be on this earth. Thy will be done in earth as it is in heaven. One day, the kingdom of God is coming, and we're asking him to let it come, so his will will be done in earth just like it is in heaven. Amen. Now, I've heard people quote this, say they're doing the Lord's Prayer, and they say, on earth as it is in heaven. But the Bible says in earth. So, Bill, why does it say in earth as it is in heaven? You got this, Bill. Because it's throughout the whole earth, not just the surface. Like what? Mm. Like religion. It's just on the surface. No, oh. like what? Uh, there's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven people in here. What are we all made of? <laughs> Dirt. We are. We're all made of earth. We're made of the earth. So when God said, when He gave us this prayer, He said, Thy will be done in earth, in all of us. We're distilled. In all of us, let Your will be done in earth as it is in heaven. And it also meant all the trees and flowers and everything else that is around, but we are also earth. We're made of earth as it is in heaven. Now, Bill... Why would you ask, give us this day our daily bread? Would you ask that if you were in a country where there was hardly any food? Yes. I would. would. Now, really, because, you know, it means that there is, when you say daily, it means there's some sort of schedule. It means that it will always be there. You know, so you want it to you know, always constant. be there, yes. don't you, Bill? So yes. in, the, in the events that maybe I'm not able to sustain myself in ways that, that I will never run out of things to have because... God will be giving me my daily bread. Right. You're always asking Him and making sure that you know that it's Him that's providing it. Right, Joey? Mm -hmm. And what is it, Nehemiah? Um, God prays for us. Um, he really knows what our name is. And, mm. God, and, and when God knows our name, He, he just wants to pray when He prays. He just made us in our sins. He made us, and He wants us to get delivered from our sins. Okay, let's get on with this. And forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. So He wants us to be willing to repent of doing wrong to our to Him and to others. And He wants us to forgive others that have done us wrong. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. So this world is full of temptation, meaning something trying to get you to do wrong, isn't it? full of temptation. So you ask Jesus, ask God not to let us get into that temptation but to deliver us from the evil of this world. And then we begin to praise Him saying, for thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory. We praise Him, don't we Nehemiah? Let's all say for thine is the kingdom and the power and the, and and the glory forever. forever. Amen. Amen. So meaning it's always going to be His. All the kingdom all the power and all the glory is always going to be His. Now, Gloria Webster, what does the word Amen mean? Amen. Uh, okay. Uh, Bill, what does the word Amen mean? Uh, be it. Huh? <laughs> amen, Jose. You say it all the time. What so, does it mean? So be it. Yep, so be it. That's what it means. But what is it? Amen. Prayer's over. Yeah. That means the prayer is concluded. Then you can go to bed. Oh, stay there. <laughs> amen. Now I can go to bed. Okay. <laughs> All right. You're listening for the amen. And with y'all in the prayer at church, when we say amen, a lot of times y'all run to the refrigerator to get candy, right? Mm. <laughs> Don't run. You're not supposed to run. But amen means the prayer is over. But amen to me. The reason it says amen is God wants us to pray together. And what would amen mean, Jose? Um, amen. What would it mean? So what do you mean? Uh, amen. I'm not, I'm not, I just missed the question. All right. 
Let me just give y'all, just throw this out to you. Because when you said all together, I mean... Throw this out to you. Okay. Whether it does or whether it don't, I'm not sure. But amen is trying to say, we are all praying this all together. Right. Is that what you said? That's what I mean. Above all men. I mean, not men as in man, but men as in everybody all together. We're praying all together. So when we say amen, we're saying, God, we're all asking you the same thing. Right. And we're all in agreement. We're together about this. We're all in agreement. Okay. So that's the prayer. But look, look, here's a little cub. He's crying. Why is he crying? He didn't pray. Why is he crying? You're right. He didn't. His cup's not. Why, Nehemiah? Let's see. Let's pour him out. There's nothing in there, isn't it? What is it? <laughs> I was, I was yes, he's crying because there's nothing inside of him. He's empty. Yeah. He's empty. So how can he not cry? You're empty. Okay, I have another one. No, look at this one. This one is not crying. She's very, it's, this one reminds me of a boy, and this one reminds me of a girl. I don't know why. Maybe, Maybe it's because the milk looks like hair. The milk okay. Looks like hair. Yeah, it does. Okay, but let's just say it's the same cup. This is the same cup. Why did this cup get happy? Because it has enough milk in it. He's uh, overflowing. It's yeah. overflowing the, with what well, am I? <laughs> um, he's happy because there's something inside. Yes, there's something inside of him. Thank you, Nehemiah. I still think the crying one. So there's something. Know. He's crying because he was empty. Now he's happy. Happy because there's something inside of him. Yes. And this is what happens when you pray. You're crying because you're empty. You don't feel happy. You feel upset. You wish that something would be better. You wish that you could find some help. You wish that that something could fill you up and make you not quite feel so empty. So then you ask, and what happens? Nothing. You cry. You ask and what? Nothing. I'm not joking again, Bill. Ask him what happens. What? Um, he, he prayed and then something got in him. Ask and it shall be given you. Seek and you shall find. Knock and it shall be opened unto you. So this little cup got busy praying, didn't he? said, Oh, dear Father, I feel so empty. I am empty. Amen. What am I going to do, Father? And, and ask? Would you give me something on the inside of me? Oh, would you show me what it feels like to be full of something good? Oh, would you open up the windows of heaven and pour me out a blessing that I don't have enough room enough to receive it? Mm. Oh, will you do that for me? And then what happened after he prayed? What? Um, when he prayed, um, he asked, and then what did he do? He received it, didn't he? And then, and then when he asked, he poured it in. Yes. yes. He poured it in. Him. Good job, he Nehemiah. received it. He received it. He saw it and he found it. Oh, he found it was full instead of empty. And when he knocked. The door was opened in heaven and out came all this milk and filled this cup up. Would you want that to happen for you, Imani? You wouldn't. <laughs> Why? Did you get on this one? You'd rather be empty? You'd rather be empty? Look, you'd rather be empty? Mm. Uh-uh. You We're would. not speaking literally. It means metaphorically. She doesn't even know what that means. Go ahead. I'd Hold on, rather, Webster, go ahead. I'd rather be full. You'd rather be full than be empty. Okay, I'm going to hold up this one. I'm going to hold one up, and if you'd rather be that way, I want you to hold your hand up. <laughs> oh, <laughs> He's adorable, though. <laughs> so? <laughs> would, you, would you rather be this well, way or this way? I should have done that, too. I should have, I, I wasn't going to do it because I've told too many jokes apparently, so I was, I was going to leave it, and then when everybody else did it, it would be way really funny if everybody just tell them the empty. You'd rather be empty than no. full? 
No. When you're empty, I'm just telling you children, when you're empty, my friend Jesus teaches you to always pray. Right. Don't just sit around being empty. Ask God to fill you. Right? Because you can't, you can't bless somebody with an empty cup. Right. Okay. The bell rang and I didn't get a bunch of things I wanted to say. Wait. One more thing. We're going to sing one little song. This is called I Love to Pray. And it's to the tune of God. It's so good. I love to pray. I love to pray. I love to pray to my Father above. To my Father above. One more time, a little higher. I love to pray. 